Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you a fairly unusual rope mat. It is made in a shape of a star, which is quite unique since most mats are either oval, rectangular or round. This one is star shaped and I make it in my own way. I use two pieces of rope, which makes this mat quite easy to tie. Now it still needs a lot of patience, but it can be done by anyone as long as you follow the instructions. With that said, let's jump right into it. This project is going to be a 3 pass version of this mat. I'm going to use hemp rope, but you can use any other material as well. I'm going to use two pieces of rope. The main one is going to be about 14 feet long. The other one, the secondary one, is going to be 13 feet long. So with these two pieces of rope, we can begin our project. After you cut a piece of rope, you always have to finish the ends in order to prevent them from fraying or unraveling. If they break apart, it can be quite hard to use them. So usually what you can use is either some duct tape or a whipping. I'm going to show you how to use a whipping. So you take a piece of thread or cord, you fold it into a bite, place that bite over the end, then with the long end you start wrapping around the end until you get a series of turns. So as you can see, I'm traveling towards the left side, wrapping around and around. After you feel that this whipping is long enough, you take the working hand and you feed it through the loop on the left. Then pull on the right end in order to pull in the left end to about the center of this whipping. So something like this. Then use both of the ends and pull on them in order to secure your whipping and with that we can continue. After securing the ends of my rope, I'm going to take the long one so this one is about 14 feet long. I'm going to take the long end, so the working end, and I'm going to make a loop, like this. Then I'm going to proceed by making another loop at the top, and another loop here on the left, and another loop on the bottom left, and a final loop on the bottom right, like this. And this is the base that we're going to interweave to get our mat. Now at this point, what we're going to do is triple up this base and then interweave with the second piece of rope. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the standing end with my working end and triple up this basic pattern. So as you can see, all I'm doing is following the standing end with my working end and I'm tripling it up.
So after you triple up your basic pattern, your working end as well as standing end should be at about the same location. Now if you have any rope remaining in your working end, you can leave it be because we're going to work it in later when we're retightening the mat. For now, take the other piece of rope. This one is about 13 feet long. And we're going to start by crossing one of the bites like this. So we go over it. Pick up the working hand. And split by going under, over, under. So under, over, and under, like this. Then pull your working end through. Like this. And this neatly locks down this bite. We continue by traveling over the next bite. And again we're going to split going under, over, under. So I take my working end, travel under, over and under. Pull your working end through. Like this. And we have locked down one more bite. We travel over the next one. Take the working end. And split by going under. Over. And under, like this. Pull your working end through. And we have locked down one more of the bites. Travel over the next one and repeat the same process. Under, over, and under and pull through. And the last of the bites, we travel over it, take the working end, travel under, over, and under. And with this we have done all of our bites. Now all we're going to do is use our working end to follow the standing end all through the mat two more times. So you can follow it either on the inner side or the outer side. It doesn't really matter. So you take the working end and you simply follow the standing end. Like this. You can see that our second rope is beginning to double up.
So we now have a double or two pass version here and we're going to continue with the third pass. As you can see I ran out of rope just before finishing my third pass. Now in order to get a bit more rope what I'm going to do is start tightening my second rope by pulling in my standing end a bit and working in all of my slack through the mat so that I come out the working end. Then I'm going to be able to continue tripling up. After that I'm going to shape up my mat and tighten it up. The main point of tightening is to get the standing end as well as working end to the same location so that you are able to stitch them up together, lash them or use a splicing. Whatever you prefer. So after retightening my mat, the working and standing end of both pieces of rope should come to the same location. So I have a standing and working end here and another one here. As you can see I have finished two ends already with the lashing. I'm going to use a lashing for the other two ends as well, but instead you can also use either a splice or stitch them up together. I have the tutorials on all three of the techniques on my channel, so feel free to look them up. Now as I've mentioned I'm going to do a lashing here. Again I'm going to use a piece of thread. I'm going to take the standing end and place it over the top of my passes. And I'm going to tie a constrictor knot. Now you can just tie it on, it doesn't really matter. So to tie a constrictor knot I make an X shape like this. Then I come around. Over the standing end. Then with my working end I travel under the X. Like this. Then tighten up. Now you could just use two overhand knots or hitches here and it would work just fine. Now from this point on I'm going to do a series of wraps. So I travel under all of the passes. Then over back to the top. Then under again. And over again. And under again. All I'm doing is making a series of wraparounds.
After I have done a few wraparounds, like this, I'm going to take my working hand and do a series of frapping turns. So frapping turns are these turns that are going horizontal and are going to tighten up my lashing. So I start from the top down and travel under the first of my passes, like this, so in between the first and second pass, and come up, then wrap around horizontally twice. So once, and twice. And this is going to tighten up my lashing quite firmly. So after I have done two frapping turns here, I'm going to move down, under, and come up between the second and third pass. Here, and again I'm going to do two frapping turns. So I come over the top, and in between again, down again, like this, and then finally I go under and come up in between the third and fourth of my passes and again I do two frapping turns. Now if your frapping turns are tightening your lashing too much, you can just do one turn in between each of the passes. So something like this. It's going to need a bit of adjustment, but it looks quite nice. Now all I'm going to do is tie another constrictor knot, but you can use any other type of a knot as long as you attach the working end onto the last of the passes. And by doing this, I have lashed two ends together. For added security, I'm going to make a couple more overhand knots. And then trim the ends. With that, our mat is complete. As you can see, we can begin using it. Guys, I know that this project was fairly advanced as far as rope mats go, so I would like to congratulate you if you came this far. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time as well.